everybody, it's Aunt Jessica. And if you can't tell by the tone of my voice, it's not a good day. Um, not for me personally and for the world. Although, if there is a positive to take away from this Olympic disaster that we're seeing, is that maybe, maybe now that it's on a world stage, more people will speak out. People have been, you know, blowing up my Twitter, my YouTube. Everybody's asking me to do a reaction video to this Olympic thing. And the problem is, if I put an Olympic video on this video, they will come for it and copyright it and shut it down. So I'll try, I'll do what I can. Um, if it gets shut down, I can probably resubmit it, but edit the videos out from whatever the Olympic committee. So when I say IOC, it's the International Olympic Committee. That is the board that makes the rules or decides which rules will be followed. So when you hear people say the IOC, that's what they're talking about. And I want to use this video to educate everybody and give you guys a little bit of ammunition, if I can, about this claimed transgender boxer that Khalif is his name. He's from Algeria and he fought Angela Carini from Italy for about 46 seconds. And then she realized it wasn't going to happen and she didn't want to risk further injury. So now we have this. And you can see it on her face. She's pissed. He doesn't care. I think right there he showed a little bit of remorse. Let's back it up. Like that right there. I don't... This guy is an asshole. I'm going to say it. Like, I don't usually use foul language on here too much. But this dude, look at this woman's passion. And look at this asshole. Like, dear, it's okay. Fuck you. That's what I say to that guy. He can kiss my ass. Piece of shit. Anyway, so runs around, thanks, thanks. I don't have enough truck driver language to describe how I feel, okay? And I can say that because my dad was a truck driver. <laughs> but you guys, this a-hole is claiming that he's intersex. And I'm sure everybody knows the whole story on these two boxers. Uh, if not, I can go over it a little bit. But we have the two boxers that are invading women's sports in the Olympics this year would be named uh, Imain Khalif from Algeria and Lin Yu Ting of Taiwan. And both of them are known to compete in the world tournament for the IBF or IBA, uh, International Boxing Association. And they won that competition for the women's division last year, but then the IBF went and stripped their medals away, rightfully so because they didn't pass the gender test, which, duh. So what I want to get out there, too, is that a lot of people are using the word intersex. And these the, t the trans rights activists that are out there ruining everything for transsexuals are always finding new ways and new angles to come out things and justify their invalid mindset. So what intersex is, is I call it a DSD. It's a developed sexual disorder or developmental sexual disorder, if you will. Uh, it's usually typically found, I would say, mostly predominantly in men that are born with possible um, female genitalia. There are some females that are born with male genitalia, but in the end, you have an, an XY chromosome set up and you've got free natural testosterone and you've crossed male puberty. So to claim that an intersex person is valid as a woman is complete nonsense. Um, it's the worst argument I think that's come around lately. The previous argument has always been, oh, well, I'm on HRT, testosterone suppression, and my T levels are lower than that of a female, so I should be able to compete. You guys, I don't know what it's going to take to end this madness, but one, we need more voices, and two, as much as I hate to say this, I'm going to cry, I swear to God. Um, is it going to take a girl being killed before everybody steps back and says, this isn't right. We need to stop this now. Well, yeah, a girl is going to die. And for the record, I'm going to be clear. This better not ever happen, but I'm going to cry. If a woman was to get unalived by a man in any sport, whether it's contact sport or not, that person should be put in prison, one, for lying, and two, for actually committing murder knowingly 
So I'm not a lawyer, but premeditated manslaughter comes to mind. I mean, give me a break. I don't care what people say. I'm not overreacting about this. Like this society has gone so far crazy. The progressives have gotten so out of control that I guarantee if a girl was to lose her life, they would, and mark my words, this is on video, and they say on the internet's forever. If this ever does happen, if we don't stop this now and a girl gets killed, they will happily report that this girl had some pre-existing condition, whether it was a heart murmur or low blood pressure. It, I don't know what medical terminology they will use, but I guarantee these lying, cheating, narcissistic, misogynistic POSs will find an excuse to say, oh, she only perished because X, Y, Z. Like, I wouldn't put it past them. And if, God forbid, a woman lose her life in any of these sports, these contact sports, lacrosse, hockey, boxing, MMA, it's beyond my comprehension, obviously. So, so sorry, getting back to the intersex condition that this Khalif guy claims that he has. I mean, you can clearly see he is not a woman. He was born a biological man. He claims intersex. He's, there has never been proof that I have seen online. I've done some research, and I can't find any document or paperwork that says Khalif was born as intersex. Now, I am told, I don't know the rules of Algeria, where he's from, but I'm told it's illegal to be gay there. So in places like uh, Saudi Arabia and like the UAE, uh, Dubai, over there, they pay for the transition. They will pay for your transition if you're gay. They will tell you you're not allowed to be gay, but you can transform yourself into a woman and sleep with men that way. That's the only way we will allow you to live as a gay person. And that's why over in the Middle East, they have some countries, not all of them, some countries will pay for transition and because they want to keep up the Muslim ideology that that there is no such thing as a gay person. So that's a crappy way around it, but a lot of people that live over there transition just because they are gay and they're forced to transition by their own government. So that in itself to me is weird. I mean, I, I get the logic. I can see it, you know, but even they should know a fully transitioned male is never going to be a biological woman, but at least aesthetically, it can appease the minds of the Muslim people that inhabit that country. So I guess that's what goes on over there, but I'm told where he's at, it's legal to be trans or gay. I don't know that 100%. So how could he, if that's where he's from and that's where he lives? I don't know. There's The IOC, as disingenuous as they are, is covering up as much as possible. And I'll set this up. This is like the second day after the opening ceremonies and the announcements, and everybody's already been aware that there's two male boxers competing in the women's division. So this is the chairman. This is his response to people questioning the fact that there's two men fighting in the women's division. The most disingenuous argument. And then he just backs out like, I don't want to answer any more of these questions. I'm done. It's just disgusting. What do you say to the female athletes who are competing, who are very concerned that they will get in the ring against athletes who are so powerful and they feel that they have an unfair advantage because of their high testosterone levels? I think what I would say at, at this stage is that, as I said before, these athletes, uh, boxers, are entirely eligible. They are women on their passport. Uh, they've competed for many years, and I actually think it's not helpful to start stigmatizing people who take part in sport like this. Um, but they are women. They competed in, in Tokyo. I think we all have a responsibility, by the way, to try to dial down this and not turn it into some kind of witch hunt. These are regular athletes who've competed for many years in boxing. They're entirely eligible. They have women on their passports. And they, that, I think, is enough said from me. So thank you very much. Okay, Mark Adams from the International Olympic Committee. That's great. They've competed in women's events before, and guess what? They were just stripped of their titles because they didn't pass the gender test. My passport says female. My driver's license says female. I did not change my birth certificate, but I could have. It's all mutable. You can change anything you want with the laws that we have in this country. 
part of being in the free society that we live in is being able to do these crazy things that I have done. But it still doesn't excuse the fact that one of these women is going to get killed in a combat sport. How blatantly ignorant or misogynistic do you have to be to just say they're women, their passport says they're women, so they meet the criteria of the IOC. Now, the IOC has some very lax transgender criteria that is, I don't even think, tested to this point. I think it's just, I I think it's primarily they self-ID, they show their ID, and because anybody can get their ID marker, anybody can get a gender marker switched on, an, on a driver's license. Now, a name change, you have to go before a judge here in the United States. And you have to get a judge to sign off on your name change. And that is something different than just changing a gender marker. Um, because I did the whole judge thing on my driver's license, I was able to just change the gender marker, whatever. I posted this on Twitter and I said, either he knows and he's just being paid enough to pretend he doesn't know that it's unfair or, but Many people replied back to me saying, oh, he knows, he doesn't care, he's just that woke. And I'm like, there's no way. Like, But then I look at it, and he's a guy, and he's an asshole. So everybody on the M International Olympic Committee needs to be put in prison for this. So here's Angela bawling her eyes out on national, on international television saying that all she wanted to do was win an Olympic gold medal for her father. Her father, I believe, passed away. And here's her speech where she talks about, I wanted to show that this is my father. Um, I'll play it. I don't think... Non so se si sente. Lui è mio padre. <laughs> Io ho fatto l'ultimo chilometro perché un giorno mi senti stanca. Prima di Tokyo mi sentivo stanca, dissi babbo sono stanca, gli allenamenti sono intensi, però io non mollo. Lui mi disse Angelino o babbo, un campione è un po' come quando combatti è un po' come il ciclismo. Il campione quando vede l'ultimo chilometro lo sai che cosa fa? Pedala ancora di più. Allora tu arriva a quell'ultimo chilometro e pedala, vai fino in fondo perché io sono sempre con te. E così ho fatto. Fino alla fine ho combattuto con sangue negli occhi perché volevo a tutti i costi questa vittoria. Solo per mio per una cosa. Okay, so that's her explaining that she was doing everything for her father and she keeps her father in her phone near her heart. And that how going the last mile during a bicycle race would be compared to giving everything you have. Uh, I'm sorry, you guys. So, yeah. If that's not enough to make everybody stand up and say, enough is enough. We need to stop this shit now. Like, this is ridiculous. This girl trained her whole life to get to the boxing world and win an Olympic medal for her father. And it was taken away like that by some guy who just wants to break the rules so he can have an easy road to a medal, I guess. I don't know. I'm not going to pretend that I know the reason behind these narcissistic, misogynistic assholes, but we're letting it happen. And I've also been in some arguments with people saying that it's women's fault for for being so inclusive and, and nice and caring. And there is a little bit of that where I talk about this in another video of mine that all of my girlfriends, God bless their hearts, that I race with, are always inviting me to race in their division in the women's class. And and mind you, these are like cat three, cat four, cat one, cat two. These are non elite level competitions because I'm old and there really would be no harm in me competing in those, in those divisions. But I just don't like, I tell the girls if it's a timed event, that's not like a cross country start. I will ride with them and they'll just tie me under the men's division anyway. So I can ride with my girlfriends. Like we can be next to each other, talking each other through obstacles, going down hills that are too steep, anything. They just want me around because they're my friends. And unfortunately, the women being so kind and caring and inclusive has, has made it almost impossible to get rid of these fake trans people. You give them an inch, they're going to take a mile. So... 
and yeah, it's, I'm sorry, you guys, I'm just having a hard time with that video, that poor girl, but anyway, she deserves better than this, and no, it is not women's fault for being inclusive and caring and nurturing. That's how women are born. That's how they were designed. That's how their mentality typically is. I'm not saying I know about every woman in the world and how they think, but that is, you know, men are typically have less feelings, are less emotional, less inclusive, that's for sure. But men are lonely and they are dominant and have a lot of uh, misogyny and toxic masculinity built into them. Now, I think having men that are forward with masculinity is what we need in this world to keep these fake trans people at bay. Maybe that would help. Instead of blaming women, why don't we blame the soft men who've just been towing the line of the left saying, oh yeah, let's be diverse and let's be inclusive. How about some hard ass men that say, no, you know, you can't just transition to a woman and start going in the bathrooms and going in prisons and going in, in changing rooms because you think you belong there. You don't get that privilege. So if we had some hard ass dudes in places that matter, I think a lot of this would stop too. But the only thing I can say is that we need to make sure in the interim, come November, please, please vote for Trump. Get out and vote. Don't just think we've got this in the bag because Kamal's an idiot. We need votes. They are going to try and get every illegal that's crossed the border this year on a voting card. And I don't know how they're going to do it, but I'm afraid they are going to do it. I'm afraid it's going to happen. Trump has already said he's not going to do anything about Project 2025 that everybody in my community is freaked out about. But he has said that he will put an end to all trans people in being in women's sports. He said he's going to put an end to it, period, once and for all. And I've said this many times. I used to be of the mindset that there could have been some middle ground, but it's gotten too far out of control. Like what with what we have right here, this is out of control. And now a complete and total ban on any trans inclusion is totally okay with me. Eventually, there will be enough trans people to start our own division. And then you can have trans men, trans women. You can let it be a free-for-all of testosterone and testosterone suppression. For all I care, you guys can destroy yourselves. One, I won't be around by the time there's enough trans people to make a lot of divisions. And two, a lot of people would probably tune into that and... And thirdly, a trans person's feelings don't supersede a woman's reality, okay? I can't stress that enough. We need to change and we need more voices. It's the only way we're going to stop this nonsense. So please, everybody, do what you can. It's almost as bad as like a crime. If you see something, say something. If you're at a local sporting event or if your friend invites you to come watch their kid's high school track meet, you know, and you see a biological guy running in the women's division, say something. Go to the promoter, go to the coach, say, has anybody brought this up to the you know, organizer? Does the school not care? We need to be calling this out every chance we get so that everybody knows we're not falling for it and we're not going to take it. We need to protect women. And I just, I can't stress that enough. So I haven't seen anything else on the Olympics as far as the, the team the U team guy from Taiwan. I don't know if he's even fought yet. Maybe that weight division hasn't come come down the line. But we'll see what happens with this guy. Like he is another one that's fake. They claim intersex and they're not. Intersex is like I said, it's a cop out. That was that was used on me during um if you guys remember, I did a protest where I went to a local cycling event with some girls that we had a trans person come in from out of state and he competed. He ended up winning against my my friend, Laura, um, cause she crashed and because she crashed, she got a hematoma on her leg and she couldn't continue. So the trans guy won, he was not, he's a, he's a male to female, so he was cheating. And he won the event because it was just her and him and she crashed trying to beat him. So anyway, I was at that event and when I questioned the guy, I didn't get it on camera because I didn't want to be too much of an asshole. And I, I don't really know if I have the right to film people like that, but I guess in public I would have. But I went up to him and I said, hey, man, there's a lot of people here that don't think you should be doing this. And, you know, what do you say to that? Like, 
does that bother you at all? And he goes, oh, I'm intersex trans. Like, it rolled off his tongue like nothing. And this guy, I will tell you right now, fathered two kids. As did many of these trans athletes that are out there in the world right now competing, claiming they're women. They fathered children. I fathered a child, but I stayed in that child's life until that child was of age. So beyond 18, that is an adult. I was there for my kid as much as I could be, and I stood by her. So for someone to claim they are a woman or intersex, and having an intersex condition typically means you won't be able to father or mother a child because you have so much developmental sexual disorder you might have. You know, female ovaries with some testicles inside. I know that sounds really gross, but it's true. You could be a man with no testicles uh, or no male genitalia at all. Uh, that They do have that. But you guys, I've, I've looked into it and a few other women looked into it as well. And the percentage of intersex people in the population of the world is like less than 0.0001. Like it's stupidly low. So the chance that there are two intersex people, we'll say that, competing in the Olympics in boxing the same year, that's like a one in a one million chance of winning the lottery. It's not going to happen. There are not that many intersex and DSD people out there. So, And I want to also point out that they will bring up the fact that trans women have been competing in sports forever. Okay, so, so here's a trans woman from the 1970s, you guys, Renee Richards was a trans girl who, a, a really remarkable story, and she has a journey, you can read about it online, her name's Renee Richards. She's a great person, and here's what, you know, so when they bring up the argument that trans people have been competing in sports, yeah, they were doing it and staying, some of the younger generation uses the word stealth. I don't really agree with that because they don't like using the word passable, and I use the word passable, like a passable trans person is someone that is not detectable by almost anyone. So Renee could, Renee could pass if she's in makeup and a nice dress and stuff, but here she's sweaty on the tennis court. So yeah, obviously she's, so they just played for the love of the sport. Okay. That's what trans inclusion was supposed to be about back in the seventies. That's what it was for to include everybody and let everybody have a chance to play the game or the sport they love. It was kind of like an unspoken courtesy that was given on both ends, women and trans women. So they just played together and everybody was happy. Yeah, maybe Renee beat some women that weren't happy about it, but she did what she could, you know, and nobody raised a fuss about it. Maybe a few people did in the past, but the point is, and for the new generation that claims, you know, that just jumps into the women's division and starts winning titles, Leah Thomas, or you know, all these men that are competing in the cycling division that are just breaking records and taking home gold every weekend. It's like, I don't want them to, to sandbag because it means that less attention will be brought to this issue because then less attention means it's not going to end. So yeah, I do want more attention. And these assholes winning titles and taking money, taking scholarships from biological women is putting the spotlight on them. And I think that's Actually, now that's a good thing because we need more voices. I I don't want to see this continue any longer. And hopefully in 2025, I don't know how long it's going to take Trump to get it past the Senate, to get it passed nationwide. But right now we only have 21 states that have disavowed the new Title IX rewrite. And if Trump is elected, and I don't know what it's going to take to get through Senate and through Congress to get it passed. So that there's just, there is no questionable gender markers and they recognize biological sex at birth is what sport you compete in regardless. And like I said earlier, had you guys had the progressive left taken their time and been nuanced about it, like Renee Richards, there might've been some discussion points and there might've been some where to meet in the middle, but now it's over. I'm done with this. There's no more trans inclusion. There's no more common courtesy. There's nothing. The trans community has ruined everything with this self-ID bullshit, and it's over. In my book, it's over. There is no more inclusion. We need to stop it now. So I'm sorry, guys. I was trying to make this a more um, informative video, and let's see what unfolds in the rest of the Olympics. Like I said, I'm hoping that the world's eyes on this 
issue now. Like as if Riley Gaines touring around the country and every video I've done and other celebrities speaking out like JK Rowling, you know, Jake Shields, to name a few, the Hodge twins. Like there's so many people against this that just get pushed aside because we're labeled right wing nuts right-wing conservative or wing nuts or crazy Nazis or transphobic or bigots. Like there's so many things that keep our voices from getting heard and we need to get our voices out there. And whether you're on the left or on the right, I don't care. You know, it's wrong. So I'm sorry, this was kind of a doom and gloom video. I want to be more informative and I need to do more research and see what's coming up on the Olympic schedule with this other guy from Taiwan. And we'll see what happens with that. I, I want to say hopefully the girls that are going to fight this guy will just straight up not get in the ring because I don't want them to get injured um, or worse. And then maybe then more people will pay attention and say, okay, this is nonsense. You know, but I've been wanting that for the last six years, I guess, and it's just not happening. So thanks for hanging out with me, you guys. I'm sorry. This wasn't a very good video, but it's just really emotional for me right now with this this whole thing. Have a good day, you guys.